Thank you, DJ Yao. Now, classical music lovers enjoyed a night with Australian pianist Daniel Herjovic, who held a performance recently in Jakarta. Now, it marked the opening of Ananda Sukarlan Award International Piano Competition 2016. Now, we have the master here in the studio, Daniel Herjovic. Good morning, Daniel. How morning, are you? Uh, very well, thank you. You're, how, how are you feeling? Are you feeling the vibe from the DJs? <laughs> yes, you know? right. don't you know? ask me about That's Pokemon, out no. from your <laughs> usual scene <laughs> of classical fine. music, fine. right? And I Daybreak is always bringing you special, special, yes. special things. You know? very good, no, so, very good. So, so how long have you been here already? Uh, this time I've been in Indonesia just over two weeks. Two weeks, yes. and and yeah. how? And you yeah. were here for the Ananda Sukarlan International Award, yes, right? Yes, that's right. Which was yeah. already held. Yes, it mm -hmm. finished yesterday. How was it? Yeah. The standard was very high. I'd mm -hmm. have to say the mm -hmm. judges were very impressed. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it was. And you were one yeah. of the judges there as that's well. That's right. Yes. So, what yeah. can you explain to us a bit more about the award? Um, this yeah. award the, the has event. been held. Uh, five times mm -hmm. this time it's an award that's held every two years mm -hmm. and it was uh, founded by the composer Ananda Sukalan mm -hmm. and it's a way of encouraging young pianists mm -hmm. to uh, develop their musicality and their pianistic skills mm -hmm. and I believe it's regarded very highly within the country mm -hmm. Is the response good? Do you have a lot of uh, young yes. talents, oh, uh, yes. upcoming rising um, talents? I've been coming to Indonesia now for five years mm -hmm. and teaching and performing and I must say I've been very impressed mm -hmm. by some of the playing that I've heard from Indonesia's young people. Uh -huh. There's some amazing talents here. Wow, yeah. okay, now yeah. perhaps you can explain to us or share with us yeah. about how, how did you get yourself into um, learning classical music or piano? Oh, I've started when I was five. Apparently, mm -hmm. I used to. In those days, we had the seventy-eight records, mm -hmm. and and those are the seventy-eight records are a type of piano, or uh, no, no, yeah. the uh, uh, before vinyl recordings. Oh, I right, had the okay. Mm -hmm. This is going back to the fifties. Oh, the fifties, okay. <laughs> and I used to play them, and then I'd play the what I heard. I would play on the piano. So I it's auto was it I out started it out of deduct and then my parents thought, oh, he better have some lessons. Wow. <laughs> so that's how it all started. Yeah. And, yeah. and how did you, have you ever thought that you would want to be a, a famous pianist one day? Uh, I don't know about famous, but from the age of about 13 or 14, I decided that I wanted to spend my life being a pianist. Being a piano. Yeah, and yeah. you are currently right now, do you, do you, do you I, teach? I teach at the University of Sydney. And you teach yes. piano yes, and yes, you teach yes. classical music. That's now, how right. many types of uh, piano, uh, types of genre would you say in, in piano? Like there's classical, there's also jazz. Oh, there's, there's classical, like... there's jazz, there's pop. And mm -hmm. within pop, there's a whole lot of different. Are there different yeah, ones? Yeah. yeah. But even within classical, there are different streams. Mm -hmm. There are pianists who only play romantic music, mm -hmm. which I don't think is very healthy, but there are. <laughs> uh, and there are pianists who specialise in Baroque music, mm -hmm. and I personally prefer to try and play a little bit of everything from so early music. So you can music play to, everything? Well, not everything, but bits, I try and play from all kinds of classical stuff. But styles. what would you say you're most passionate about, though? That's a very difficult question. Mm -hmm. When I play contemporary music, I'm passionate about contemporary music, uh -huh. like the Ananda Sukalan piece yes. that we're hearing just now in the mm -hmm. background. And when I'm playing Bach, I'm passionate about Bach. Mm -hmm. So whatever I'm playing at the moment, mm -hmm. that's what I'm most passionate about. Now, yeah. you held a mini concert last week in Jakarta, yeah? yeah? Yes, and how yeah. was the respond? It was very good. Um, I played music by various mm. composers, including Australian composers and Indonesian composers, mm -hmm. as well as, uh, what else did I play? Uh, a Danish composer and mm -hmm. Beethoven and Schubert. So I like those kind of mixed programs. And mm. yeah, the response was very positive. Varieties yes. even, yeah. Yes. Wow. There are, a lot yeah. Of, are there a lot of young, um, younger kids right now aiming yeah. or reaching towards heading towards becoming a pianist I in think Indonesia? So. Yes, I think there are, of course, Young kids, they see just, you know, the, the lights and the glory. And mm. then when they become teenagers, they realise that it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. And some of them change Is their it a lot minds. of hard work playing so, the piano? Well, you just have to, it's, 
you've got to practice every day mm. and you've got to maintain your standards. If you don't yeah. have a passion for piano, yeah. but you, let's say your parents, yeah. you know, yeah. made it, yeah. made you yes. go for piano lessons. Yes. Now, yeah. would it be different from the, so from someone who actually has passion in piano in terms of playing it, in terms of, you know, going from, for the exams? Yes. Oh yeah, that's different. I mean, I think it's right for parents to encourage mm. children to learn the piano, even if they're not particularly passionate mm. about it. It doesn't mean that they're going to be pianists later on, but just as part of the general education, mm -hmm. music is very mm -hmm. important for children. Mm -hmm. And later on, they'll actually be grateful. Mm. Uh, but a, a, ch a parent shouldn't force the child to do want to become a professional mm -hmm. uh, because that's a very different thing. You, the motivation has to come from within yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, did you get a lot of support when you wanted to be a pianist? Um, yes, from family, I think I did. From yes, uh, yeah, my family were very supportive, mm -hmm. and my teachers were very supportive. Yeah, yeah, I did get support. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Now, apart from um, Jakarta, yeah. you actually visit a few other cities in uh, Indonesia. Yeah. So far, I haven't seen as much of Indonesia as I would like mm -hmm. to, but I've, I've, I go every year to Surabaya, mm -hmm. and I went last year to Jogjakarta mm -hmm. also. I think I'm the only Australian who's never been to Bali. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope to get there one day and yeah. I'd like to see the other islands. So. How are the, how are the um, classical music scene there in Jakarta and yeah. in Surabaya? Is it the same as in Jakarta? Um, I think in Surabaya the classical music scene is huge. It's a big yeah, area. Yeah, yeah it's, mm -hmm. and there's some very talented students mm -hmm. there as well. Uh, and Jakarta, well of course you have EC there, mm -hmm. uh, Institute. Institute Sen in Indonesia mm -hmm. uh, and I heard some very talented students there as well. Oh. Yeah. What yeah. impressed you the most when you visit Indonesia? Yeah. Oh, in general, well, I love the people, I love the food, mm -hmm. I like the batik shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The batik yeah. yes, you're yeah, wearing batik yeah, right yeah, now, right? Yeah. You don't find it anywhere else, only in yeah. Indonesia. And batik shirts, that's the most comfortable to wear in a concert. Yes, that's Much what better than is. Western <laughs> dress. <laughs> no, but in terms of the music scene, yeah. you know, do you, yeah. what impressed you the most? Like, what is different with Indonesia and other countries that you've been to? Uh, um, well, the interest, what's surprising is that Indonesia doesn't have a long history of interest in classical music. Mm -hmm. And what's surprising to me is how knowledgeable people here are. For instance, mm -hmm. on my very first visit to Indonesia, I was amazed that people knew so much about Australian classical composers. Mm -hmm. And I'd have to say I knew almost nothing about Indonesian <laughs> classical composers. So I have tried for that reason uh -huh. to play Indonesian music mm -hmm. now. And I also play Indonesian music mm -hmm. in Australia. Oh. Now well. Is there a difference between the Indonesian classical music yeah. and Australian classical oh, music yes, in terms yes, of yes, yes, notes yes, maybe? Yeah, or in what? terms of style. Maybe you can explain yeah. to us more about it? Um, well, um, a lot of Indonesian composers are influenced quite rightly by traditional Indonesian mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. I mean, the obvious example is Ananda's uh, Rhapsodia Nusantara, yeah. and I believe he's written 20 of them, or almost mm -hmm. finished his 20th. Mm -hmm. And I think in all of them he uses a traditional... Instrument? Uh, no. No, traditional Just a melody. Piano. A melody, uh, tra okay. Tra traditional mm -hmm. uh, melodies from Java, from Ache, from his, his Papua uh, melodies. Mm -hmm. uh, and Trizuchi Kamal has mm. also written music based on Indonesian folk melodies, but mm. even in her more uh, Western style music, mm. she incorporates Indonesian music, traditional Indonesian musical mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she's a very, very interesting. But person. Indonesia is a very cultural country yes. as, oh, as compared yes. to maybe yeah. Australia yeah. or you yeah. know there are more yeah. there are more variety of, yeah. of, of different cultures and yeah, races here as right. well yeah, now right. but Australia do you see that sort of like what's the um, essence in, in the music like in Indonesia we have you know like you mentioned they have a they put in a lot of Javanese style yeah, what about right. in Australia yeah. that's very very interesting um, nowadays Western composers in Australia are incorporating some Aboriginal music. Mm -hmm. For instance, they incorporate the didgeridoo in their works. That's a traditional Aboriginal mm -hmm. instrument. But what's interesting in Australia also is that composers are being influenced, instead of being influenced by European music, which they were mm -hmm. in previous generations, they're now influenced more by 
the music of their neighbouring countries, many of them, like Ross Edwards and Peter Skaldorf, have mm -hmm. been influenced by mm -hmm. Indonesian music, mm -hmm. uh, but also by music from New Guinea and uh, Japan, right. so countries in the Pacific mm -hmm. Ocean region. Have yeah. you ever visited Singapore? Uh, I haven't been to Singapore. All no, right, because um, we talk yeah. about uh, Asian countries, yeah. right? Yeah. You, know, you, you can't compare Indonesia and Australia, yeah. but you can yeah. compare Indonesia and the neighboring, like yeah. Singapore yeah. or Malaysia. Yeah. Do you happen yeah. to know how the music scene is there? I don't. I, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm really so <laughs> So that's the next yeah. stop that you must. Maybe that's must. the next stop. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. are, what are what is the biggest challenge when it comes to um, classical music? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, there are, I guess, two challenges. One is the sheer technical challenge of getting your fingers around the notes, mm -hmm. but then you have to really develop your feeling for each style. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing Beethoven, that's very different from playing Chopin. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're playing Indonesian music, mm -hmm. uh, I have to try and immerse myself in a completely different musical way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's very interesting. An example of that is that in a lot of Asian languages, in, 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 in the Indonesian language, mm -hmm. you accent the last note of a, the, the, sorry, the last syllable of a word. Uh -huh. But in Western languages, you often accent, you, that, that's the weakest syllable of All the right. word. And that means in music, it's yeah. very similar. So uh -huh. when you end a phrase in Western music, you end it softly, but uh -huh. often in, Indonesian music, that's the wrong thing to do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, and then longer. Uh, yes. Ah, it's, right. um, so, yeah, you, language and language, music are obviously yeah? very related, mm -hmm. so you have to be, become very aware of that mm -hmm. and very aware of the differences. Yeah. All right, Daniel, we're yeah. going to go for yeah. a short break, yeah. but after we come back, we're going to yeah. continue talking. Right, now, you. Daniel still has more to share about classical music in Indonesia after the break. Stay with us. Ngaben is a funeral ritual performed in Bali to send the deceased to the next life. The procession begins by carrying the deceased in a tower with odd-numbered tiers called Bade and Kreteng. The deceased is then placed in a buffalo-shaped sarcophagus before being transported to the cremation site. Royal families, meanwhile, use red and golden dragon sarcophagus as a sign of pride and dignity. There are no tears in Ngaben as it is believed to hinder the spirit's journey into Nirvana. The ceremony concludes by gathering the ashes, placing them inside a yellow coconut and drifting it into the sea. Pencak Silat Masters are healing fractured bones in Bogor's Cimandi District, West Java. In performing the healing, the Panjak Silat Masters do not hesitate in pulling and straightening the fractured limbs. Despite screams and agonizing pain, the patient's fracture quickly heals. This method of healing has been done for centuries by Panjak Silat Masters. It combines herbal remedy and Panjak Silat moves.
Welcome back, and you're still watching Daybreak with me and our guest, Daniel Herjovic. Now, just now we spoke about classical music, a lot of them. Now, we want to talk about the younger generations right now, in yeah. Indonesia especially. Yeah. Now, uh, you, sa you said that there are a lot of talents That's here, right. you know, yeah. but do you see any untapped or raw talents that could actually make it really big one day? I have seen uh, those, mm -hmm. um, and an example of somebody who is already uh, on their way to a professional career. Last night, uh, Edith Widayani, who was a previous mm -hmm. winner of the Ananda Sukalan Award, she gave a very, very fine piano recital mm -hmm. of Chopin. So she's already on the way to mm -hmm. professional career. She lives in America now, completing right. a doctorate. So that's one example of somebody who's in Indonesia mm -hmm. who has uh, is already at mm -hmm. the beginning of a professional career. What kind yeah. of skills do they need to actually bring it to the next level? Uh, obviously technical skills, uh, musical skills, and obviously there are particular personal qualities one needs. One needs to have uh, determination and tenaciousness. Mm. One has to be passionate enough to really work at it constantly. Mm. Um, yes, and probably nowadays one needs PR skills as well. PR yeah. skills, yes, <laughs> yes very yes, important. Yes, now, yes. someone like Joey Alexander, now do you think that um, he's from Indonesia? No, You've heard right. of Joey Alexander, right? But, I, I don't. Oh, he's this 12 years old, 12 oh, okay. year old boy yeah, who actually yeah. plays the piano. Right, but right. Uh, he's not really into classical, I think right, he's more right. into jazz, yeah, and he made yeah. it to the global market now. Right, so right. we're going to talk about those who are actually maybe, you know, really teenagers, really yeah. young teenagers, yes, you know. Yes. How do you tell, how can you tell if they can actually make it big one day? Um, maybe at the age of 10, 11, yes. 12. You can't necessarily actually tell mm -hmm. for certain whether they're going to make it big one day, but you can certainly tell if they've got the potential to mm -hmm. do so. The thing with a 10 or a 12 year old is that we all know that in the teenage years, uh, our, uh, that's a time of big personal development. Uh, sometimes other interests take over. Um, and sometimes that somebody who's 10, 12 and you hadn't thought was that talent, suddenly they flower mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's, that's another example. Mm -hmm. So at the age of 10 or 12 you can't be that certain, but you can certainly, mm -hmm. I heard a, I, a, uh, there was a piano camp, camp in Bogor a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, I, I heard some amazingly talented, mm -hmm. yeah, 12, 10 or 12 year olds, one girl mm -hmm. in particular, I can't remember her name, mm -hmm. but yeah, she was, I thought she had so Indonesia has always had a lot of events um, yeah. pushing them yeah. towards the music industry That's Indonesia right, 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 uh, especially yeah. when it comes to classical music right, yeah. Right, yeah now what other countries do Indonesia have ties with uh, when it comes to music or classical music or piano oh well as an example many uh, Indonesian mm. uh, piano students come to Australia to further their studies mm -hmm. and um, and actually this year, the Ananda Sukalan Award was very delighted that mm -hmm. the Australian Embassy here supported supported uh, the competition. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, many Indonesian young pianists go to Europe to further their studies. Mm -hmm. I know one who's gone to Germany. Others go to France, mm -hmm. uh, and actually, France this year, the French Embassy mm -hmm. has supported the uh, Ananda Sukalan Award. In fact, yeah. the winner, I think, this year is being invited to attend a summer mm -hmm. uh, music school mm -hmm. in, in uh, France. So they've been sponsored by the French yes, Embassy? That's, yes, that's right. Yes. Oh. And in fact, it was the competition was held at the Mm -hmm. Institut Francais, mm -hmm. Indonesia, mm -hmm. yes. That's right. Do you think it's important for the government to actually play, you know, contribute to the music scene or do you think uh, it's not? I think it's very important. Um, I can't speak for France, but Australia and Indonesia are neighbours mm -hmm. and I suppose we are all aware that the relationship between Australia and Indonesia has sometimes been difficult. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this kind of thing helps mm -hmm. uh, uh, to foster a good relationship between our two countries. Right. Yes. Now we go back to young talents yes, here. Yes. How, what can they do to actually improve their skills or let's say if they want, they're interested and passionate yes, about being, yes. you know, pianists, yes, yes. what should they do? Uh, well, they should make sure they have a good teacher, that's uh -huh. the first thing, um, and they should 
they should not only develop their pianistic skills, mm -hmm. because pianistic skill is basically an athletic skill, that's, mm -hmm. that's very much related to sport, but they should listen to a lot of music, and not necessarily mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. classical music, but even within classical music, a lot of mm -hmm. different styles, mm -hmm. and not just piano music, but opera, and opera. string quartets. Mm -hmm. And because I can imagine for an Indonesian young person, um, they even more that say than for an Australian young person, they need to immerse themselves in this musical language, which mm -hmm. is not their first musical language. Yeah. So it's not just a matter of playing the mm -hmm. notes, it's a matter of having musical insight into mm -hmm. the style. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Where, where would you say Indonesia is positioned mm -hmm. right now in yeah. terms of music as compared to maybe compared to Australia? Well, I think the musical scene here is growing. Um, I'm amazed at the number of, of people who are learning the piano. Mm -hmm. um, it's very hard to compare. Australia has ten times the population of... Uh, Indonesia has ten times mm -hmm. the population of Australia, so obviously there are going to be yeah. more young people. But even having said that, there's some amazing talent here. Um, and we heard some of it at the competition. But of course, Australia has had the music, um, classical music scene longer yeah, than Indonesia. That's right. That's right? Correct. Do you think Indonesia is already um, on their way? It's certainly on its way. I or are they just starting right now? They're not just starting. I think uh, it's, as far as I can tell, it's really grown mm -hmm. in the last 40 or 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I think. It's a similar, like in Japan, the musical scene has been there for a, about a hundred years, yeah. and the Japanese now are their best musicians are at the top yes, level, yeah. same as And I think in Indonesia that will be the case mm -hmm. probably within the next generation or mm -hmm. maybe two generations. Mm -hmm. But it's it's developing really fast, mm -hmm. and there's some very good teaching happening. Yeah, I've noticed yeah. that. Yeah. So are you are you going to come back to Indonesia? Oh yes. Maybe I come every year. You come every I year? Love, so yeah, you're yeah. going to come and open a class? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I give master classes here and I, I generally perform a few times when I come. So, and I'm hoping to go to the other islands as well. <laughs> so viewers, yeah. anyone who are interested in actually yeah. becoming a pianist, you're the master <laughs> here and you can learn with him. Yeah, Thank yeah, you so much, Yanil, for your pleasure. time. Thank you for having me. Now coming up, get your sweet tooth ready as we take a look at New York's Museum of Ice Cream. We'll be right back.